Well, Isro is just a step away from a successful soft landing of Chandrayaan 3. We have uh, Mr. L.V. Prasad, the former Deputy Director of Isro, joining us. Sir, most steps have gone according to the plan. Just a step away from creating history. How yeah. do you see this, sir? Uh, so far, whatever we have done has gone as per the plan. And in fact, uh, Chandrayaan 2 also uh, went as per plan till uh, the next stage also. Only in the final stage, there, was, uh, there were some issues. So those issues have been addressed now. Mm. Uh, they have been comprehensively addressed, and many corrective measures have been taken. Many improvements have been done uh, with respect to the Chandrayaan 2 mission. Mm. And now the uh, confidence uh, is much more amongst the scientists. And, uh, and uh, added to that, uh, uh, the not only the uh, in improvement in the design, a lot of tests have gone in. Whatever we were not understood uh, last time, all these things have been understood now, and uh, they have been properly addressed to make sure the mission uh, this time will be a success. Yeah. So looking forward, yeah. a successful landing, what does it mean for India's future space missions? Uh, various plans that India has, and also at an international level. Yeah, see, first, first thing is now uh, soft landing to any planet, whether it is a moon or uh, Mars or anything, is a very, very, very difficult uh, task. Because as you know, it's now popularly known, there are known knowns, known unknowns, and uh, unknown unknowns. Yeah. So we would have addressed known knowns and known unknowns. So there are still unknown unknowns uh, when we go there, we encounter certain things. So once you are able to land, in any uh, celestial body. Now, that means you'll be able to uh, do some uh, activity there, and uh, you'll also be able to come back. Hmm. After that, you'll, you'll also be able to come back. Now, the uh, moon has been explored many, many years ago. Now, there's an interest, and Mars also, um, a rover has been uh, roving around Mars for many years, and uh, there's an interest to explore other planets. Hmm. So, it is not to see what is there in that planet, it is also to see what, uh, to understand our planet better. So how was the evolution and uh, what were the conditions uh, prevailing at that time and uh, what has happened now, it's uh, very important to in, uh, you know, understand our environment also. So the space exploration, uh, for some time it had uh, uh, taken a back, back seat because of the, in the, from NASA and many other agencies, uh, yeah. because of uh, budget constraints and things like that. But our program, we were very clear we have to achieve certain things before we go to the space exploration. Mm -hmm. So as per that uh, vision, you know, we have now um, almost uh, catered to the other needs like uh, remote sensing or communication and things like that. Uh, now uh, the space exploration uh, phase has started for ISRO. So here, uh, going to the other planets and studying them, finding out what is there, and also now, uh, you know, as you know, the resources on this planet is becoming rare and rare. So we need to find out what are the resources that we can bring from the other planets and uh, what, how best we can use the other planets also. Mm -hmm. For example, the people are talking about helium-3 on moon, which is a very clean form of uh, you know, fuel for the nuclear energy. Mm -hmm. So if such a possibility exists, then definitely we need to go there. Mm -hmm. So first thing, first step is to soft landing for that. Mm -hmm. So we need to land there first. And after that, we need to uh, do whatever activities we want to do and then uh, finally come back with the results. So that's why this soft landing becomes very important for us. So since you were also part of the LEOS system um, yeah. center yeah. here in uh, Bengaluru, yeah. I want to ask you about the onboard cameras that are on the lander and the rover. How important are they, sir, one? And second, ISRO also recently pointed out that most of it has been developed in-house. Yeah, correct. See, mainly in ISRO, uh, we have two uh, main uh, centers for developing these cameras. One is in the uh, Space Applications Center that is Ahmedabad, mm. which makes all the remote sensing cameras. And uh, the other uh, electro-optical based instrumentation, uh, many of the things are developed in uh, the laboratory for electro-optic systems in Bangalore. Mm. So these are the two main centers where the optics and the electronics and all the associated uh, uh, paraphernalia are developed. Mm. So now, he, this time, we have some very important cameras. Like last time, we have the, have the camera for the orbiter also. Mm. The orbiter has been giving, past four years, it has been giving us uh, fantastic pictures, mm. which have been used in, uh, actually, the orbiter uh, camera of the Chandrayaan 2 mm. 
has been extensively used to map the moon terrain, mm. which is now useful to us. So similarly, here also we have the orbiter camera, which is, uh, I think, supplied by SAC Ahmedabad. Mm. Then we have the hazard detection camera, hazard, hazard detection and avoidance camera. Mm. See, this camera becomes very important because now this time when we are landing, uh, it is not in sing one single phase. There are some three, four phases. One is the uh, rough braking phase where you are trying to reduce the uh, velocity, which is on the both the co you know, horizontal and uh, vertical components. Uh, then you enter into some attitude hold phase mm. where you stay there and try to slowly orient the uh, lander uh, vertically. That is, the thrust mm. vector has to become vertical. Mm. And then, then you enter the rough braking phase where we come from, say, about 7 kilometers to 800 um, meters or so. And then from there, you uh, come to the uh, still lower altitude, that is 150 meters. During these phases, especially during the last two phases, uh, we need to find out whether the, see, when we see the moon, it mm -hmm. is not, uh, you know, as we see, very smooth. Uh, yeah. There are very large craters and uh, you know, boulders and, uh, you know, uneven surfaces. Mm -hmm. So when we land, and they can be many meters deep inside also. Mm. So when we land, uh, we have to make sure that this small lander uh, spacecraft lands in a perfectly flat surface mm. so that all the four legs are properly implanted on the surface. Mm. So th we have this camera, the lunar uh, lander hazard detection and avo avoidance camera mm. to find out actually what is you know the terrain and then uh, give a feedback uh, and decide whether uh, we can land the you know land our spacecraft there or move it laterally horizontally to some other place and land it and then uh, also when uh, see the initially when you start the entire operation hmm. it will be thousands of kilometers speed yeah, yeah. thousands of kilometers per second yes. okay so now it has to be reduced to a few meters hmm. so earlier in Chandrayaan 2 we didn't have this direct measurement hmm. now we have what is known as the laser Doppler velocimeter, mm. which is again developed uh, by uh, Leos in Bangalore. So that will give you a direct measurement, both in the horizontal and the vertical, mm. uh, both the components it will give you. It will resolve both the horizontal and uh, vertical vectors of the velocity and give you the velocity information. Mm. So this also plays a very important, now this camera, this camera is in the closed loop. Mm. That is the navigation and the control system, the propulsion system, and this camera, they're all in closed loop. Now, based on whatever information this gives, uh, the accordingly, the uh, thrust uh, will be ad adjusted in the propulsion system. The velocity will be brought down mm -hmm. accordingly. So these are all in clo closed loop. So both these cameras, one is to find out the proper terrain for the landing, mm -hmm. proper site for the landing. And the other one is to uh, reduce the velocity. Uh, mm -hmm. First is, uh, you know, measure the velocity. Mm -hmm. And uh, using this inf information, reduce the velocity so that you have a very benign I uh, know speed when you land on the mm. the expected speed now is about one meter per second when you land. Mm. So even though the legs are designed for about three meters per second, mm. so you, you expect it to la uh, land with as much less velocity as possible. Mm. So these two uh, cameras are play a very important role in this particular mission. I also believe there's another camera which is part of the payload for uh, experiments on the surface. Yeah, the one is the on the, on the, the rover. Uh, we have two payloads. One is the uh, LIBS, that is the Laser Induced Breakdown Spectroscopy, mm. which is again an electro optical system. And one is the X-ray sp spectroscopy. So this uh, LIBS, what it does is, the, you know, the, the moon surface, uh, what uh, we don't call it as a surface, we call it as a regolith. Mm. Uh, see, in Earth, uh, on, on, the, on this planet, we don't have the, we have the, uh, we are uh, protected by the geomagnetic field. Hmm. We are also protected by the Earth's atmosphere, whereas on the moon, we don't have any such protection. There are directly the sun rays, which are uh, you know, emitted from the sun, the uh, CME, that is the coronal mass ejections, and uh, the harmful radiations, they directly hit the moon. Uh, so what they do is they uh, charge the particles there, the uh, plasma is developed, and the moon surface also, the, all the whatever minerals are there, they're uh, uh, charged, and uh, hmm. the surface um, properties will be different. So we have to study those uh, in case we want to bring something tomorrow from there. Mm. We should know what is there in that. So this instrument, this LIBS instrument is a very simple instrument. It has a laser uh, system uh, which will ablate the moon's surface. That is, mm. it's in simple terms, it in 
it is it will eliminate the moon surface there is a spectrum for each mm. element for each element say for example potassium magnesium or whatever or any other metal uh, whatever is there that will have a specific signature when ablated by the laser mm. so this is the principle so once it is ablated it will give that signature and we can find out what is the composition of the moon surface mm. so that is one important uh, electro optical uh, system on this uh, rover and there's a uh, similar one in the x-ray spectrum there's one more uh, uh, you know instrument which will do the same function in the x-ray spectrum mm. these are the two instruments in the rover well there you go uh, as he mentioned it's not just about soft landing and uh, getting that kind of uh, knowledge and technology the kind of payloads on the system various elements uh, part of the system to have been uh, built in house by isro and uh, isro hoping that uh, this so soft landing will get them crucial insights that will help them in their future space mission